House of Mystery presents Inside Writing, the radio show where authors discuss their writing process in all genres. You are back in the House of Mystery, and I'm Al Warren. Mr. Martino is on the other side of the world, hanging out. Hanging out? I'm hanging out with uh, a cover model. Oh, who's that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, you? Yeah, no, it's pretty You sad. are a cover model. Oh, I know. I know, and we're down to two photos. And, you know, it's really <laughs> sad when they're taking uh, my picture and I look at it and I go, who's that? <laughs> I don't recognize this guy. Is he wanted? Um, really, really bad how fast you realize you age. This is why I don't watch any of those TV shows that I'm in. Um, it's pretty embarrassing, you know. Um, you look great, Al. Oh, please. Please, don't even try. <laughs> I'm getting sympathy votes all day. All yesterday, <laughs> that's all I've already going. Sorry. No, they were trying to be really nice. You know, oh, you look great. Very handsome, please. <laughs> it's been 40 years. But, you know, but today, now we have a real handsome guy on. And he's got this wonderful picture. Anybody need, it, they need to go to his, uh, you know, Amazon page and everything else. Like, wow, they don't make him better than this. He looks like an author. <laughs> so, <laughs> so from Kanakistan, we've got Mr. Brad C. Anderson. Thank you for coming on the show. Hello, hello. Uh, is this face made for radio? The my, my trick is to make sure that the photo is small enough that it's all blurry and pixelated. So it's like <laughs> you can just put whatever image you have in your head onto it. That's the that's the secret. I was going to say it's probably not even you. Yeah, strategic ambiguity. <laughs> you know, he gets one of those stock photos off the internet. <laughs> exactly. You see the water print. You see the water print across it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, this is me. Really, it is. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, I don't give you any ideas. No. <laughs> well, you, look, you look surprisingly like the most interesting man in the world. How did that? Uh, what's this watermark here? <laughs> yeah. What's this? I was just protecting the rights of the photographer. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good friend of mine. So, um, what what is it like being a Canadian writer in the world? Uh, it I like I like it I like it. Um, it's, that's a fun question. I have nothing else to compare that to. Uh, I think uh, Canada. I think Canada on the world kind of gets ignored a lot, which means that I can just sort of be quietly back here writing away. And uh, and and um, but we do get ignored a lot. Sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's a bit of a challenge. Like hello. We're yeah. here too. Have, has this has this been an issue? Are you seeking help for this? <laughs> seeking yeah, being I'm, being I'm, ignored. You know, you talking to a shrink, looking looking for a counselor. Like, am I a ghost? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I, I, I think when you look at the news these days, I'm like, oh, it's, it's kind of it's it's, uh, it's all right to fade into the background. This is this is we're at a stage in the world where it's all right to fade in the background. I think a little bit. I think so. You're better. Yeah. You're, you know, you're better to be somewhere in the middle, right? Because no one's paying attention. Everyone's yep. that, that that top is getting yelled at and yep. fighting, and then everyone at the bottom. You know, it's just better to be, uh, yep. you know, average. Just, just stuck in the middle there. <laughs> yeah, nobody's really paying attention to us. That's I always found that like at work, that's the best place to be. Like, just you can kind of do your job. Nobody pays attention to you. Nobody's rolling you into meetings and stuff like that. You're like, eh, just. Oh, did you, I didn't know strippers had meetings. That, well, you'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty it's interesting. It's like uh, you, have to, you have to, like, coordinate G-strings and, oh, it's. <laughs> oh, yeah. Behind the scenes. I guess so. And you guys all talk about brand, you know, what yep. brand you're going to use and who likes exactly, what Exactly, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and what, how what to put them good. on the right way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which way is the inside out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got, it's got, it's got this tag hanging out. It's bigger than the material. Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> I'm terrible. This is the first time on the show. So, how do you? Con what kind of writing do you consider yourself? That's the best way to start. Uh, technically, it would be sci-fi. I'm a sci-fi writer. Uh, when you when you when you talk about sci-fi, there's like a, a thousand different subgenres of yeah. it, of course. Yeah, that's um, that's kind of my next statement because yeah. nowadays, like, you know, there's hard sci-fi, and of course, I'm thinking porno, and yeah. and, and then there's <laughs> there's all these different versions. And thank God that Dave here he keeps on 
fill in me in. No, that's not what that means. Alan. That's not what that is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's that's not what that's not what hard sci-fi means. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know. So yeah. so so. So yeah, I, I I would not characterize myself as hard sci-fi as either of you two would define it. Um, <laughs> That's so, too so bad. I, I, yeah, I know. I it's, it's like uh, it's like I uh, know it's like semi-hard sci-fi. There you go. <laughs> we were just in the world. It. It's at sixty, I, I can work with this at sixty. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I I like to explore more societal themes, human themes, uh, sort of character-driven sci-fi, character-driven sci-fi, whatever you want to call, whatever you want to call that. Um, so, are you starting then? Because uh, so, with the basis of your sci-fi, you're starting with maybe a character and a question or a placing of what they have to deal with, rather than yeah. let's say a science itself. Yeah, exactly. I would say that um, you, usually the thing that pops into my head uh, would be would be some kind of theme or idea that I want to explore, uh, and then and then so it's like a theme or idea or an issue. Build some characters around that, um, and you know, like themes and issues involve people. Like that's like people experience them. So so they tend to be more character driven, kind of wrestling with with, with whatever issue the book is about. Uh, yeah. Are you, yeah. are you worried then of, of following something that can be scientifically sound in your books then? Like, are you, are you kind of, I, I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I do try to make sure. So, so I try to make sure that there are elements that are grounded in science. Uh, but I don't, I don't go, I don't go the hard sci-fi route with it. You know, I kind of find hard sci-fi to be uh, focused very much on on scientific integrity, scientific accuracy, like, like you know, they kind of walk through these are the scientific principles that could lead to this thing that we're seeing here. I do have, uh, there are certain aspects of the story that, that are maybe the core aspects, the core aspects of the story, which I try to make sure are scientifically robust. But then other elements of it are kind of, you know, just, just sort of the hand, the hand waving technology, you know, technological magic, just sort of wave the magic, you know, the, the technological wand. Like, uh, so, so in the story that, that we're here to talk about, uh, Duotero, my background is in the biological sciences and it, de- it takes place on uh, uh, an, a, a colony on another world. And I tried to make sure that the the biology of that life was grounded in science. The biochemistry of that life was actually grounded in real science. Um, that was sort of the more important element of the story, and I wanted to make sure that that had some scientific ground, uh, grounding. But in terms of like, hey, faster than light space travel, that wasn't one of the key themes with the story. So that was just kind of hand, hand oh, they figured it out. They hand waved it away. So, so I, I focused... The scientific reality, I kind of focus on on the element that's key to the story, and then other things kind of just get hand waved hand waved away. Robust. I think that's the ne- next name of my next book. Robust. Robust. <laughs> yeah, it's a good name. Good word. <laughs> but um, I, this really um, is curious that so you worked in the biotech industry before, yeah, and then now you're writing, and um, I wonder what it was that inspired you to actually turn into a writer, so to speak, start writing and mm-hmm. actually publish it for the public to read. Like what was, like, I mean, that takes a little bit of courage. It takes a little bit of, it, because it's hard, you know, you, you go through oh, a yeah. book and you're writing a story, it's all coming from you. And then it's so easy not to actually publish it because, you know, it's easier than facing the music, so to speak. But what was it that made you, to do this yeah um so this the this like why why do i write i feel like i'm bo- you know just sort of wired that way to do that i just have stories in my head and they won't stop until i get them out uh in terms of, it, like i want you're right like it is a decision because you can just write for yourself and you can just write for your close friends and family when you do try to expand your audience and you look for publishers and you look for agents and you look for you know and and, and you try to get your book out there good lord yeah you get a lot of uh, like it's hard you got to be resilient for it right yeah. um you get a lot of people 
critical of your work, you get a lot of no's. And that can be really heartbreaking. Like you say, it can be really heartbreaking because writing a novel takes a long time. Like it takes a lot, like it's your heart, it's your soul, it's your dreams. You're just uh, like crafting it. And then you get somebody who's like, nah, no thanks. I'm not interested. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is yeah. off market or um, yeah, whatever. Right. Make someone go, what is this? This is terrible. Yeah. Like, I don't like, this is lame. Like what boring. Yeah. Like, what? This is my dreams. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, like you, you have to face that if you want to, I think, expand your audience. And a lot, what, what drives me to do that is, um, but you know, st stories are meant to be shared, right? Like if you're, uh, stories are meant, art is meant to be shared. Art is meant to be shared, right? So if you're going to consume art, I, as you know, I don't want to spend years writing a story and then have it sit in my desk. You know, it's meant. I wrote it to be shared. So, uh, so that's that's you, kind you of the wrote it so that people would put it in their bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like when you're sitting there and your battery on your phone dies, like what am I going to do now? Um, yeah, exactly. Well, that's the best place to read. Uh, nobody's interrupting. That's you. right. Yeah. Occupied. Yeah. Well, you know, you've you've written uh, both uh, short fiction and yeah. long fiction novels. Do you feel you're a natural short story writer or a natural novelist? Do you do you have a preference? That's that's a that's a tough question. Um, do I have a preference? Short stories, it's, it's a lot more gratifying, a lot faster, right? Like for me, for me, novel writing takes a lot. Like it takes me years, right? Like, I, mm. like I still have a day job and I work, and so so it takes me years to write a novel. Years, you know, like like nobody sees what you're producing, right? With short stories, mm. it's faster. You can you can turn something out quickly. You can get it published a lot quicker. So it's a lot more gratifying, right? Um, yes. But I don't think you get the same audience that you know, like it doesn't have the same cachet. You don't necessarily get the same audience that you might with, with a novel, right? So you have this trade. And usually the way that it kind of works for me, the way that I write is, you know, so I'll, I'll work on a novel. Like I'll have a story that's, that's you know, you have these, it's, it's the idea that drives. You have this idea and some of them just take a novel to fully flesh out. Some of them are just quick little pops, right? So I'll be working on a novel. And, you know, I'll, I'll grind out a first draft. And for me, that takes like a forever. And then, poof, got the first draft. Need to take a little bit of space away from it. And I've been in this for a long time. So I might go and I, I might pop out a couple of short stories, right? Just get my head out of it, do something fun. Get, get, feel like I'm getting some forward momentum doing something, right? right? Pop out a couple of short stories, come back, do draft two. And that takes a forever amount of time as well. <laughs> Need to get some space, start to pop out a couple other short stories. So I kind of find... Short stories, they're, they're, they're like the break. They're like this little fun thing that I get to do while you're sort of grinding away on, <laughs> on shaping this, this, the, the novel, right? And so I kind of get that balance, right? I like, I like the little pop, uh, but sometimes you just have ideas and you're like, like I can't just, I can't get this idea out in, you know, uh, in, in a short story. Plus, I find like there's a lot of pressure in the short story market to be shorter and shorter and shorter. Right? right. They're like, right. Uh, you know, technically a short story is 5,000 words, but if you want it to be more easily marketable, it's got to be a thousand words. And then you got flash fiction. So, mm. so the idea that you can get across in that, in that short little pop is you, know, you can get some cool ideas across, but so, some ideas just take a little bit more time. There, there are some, there are some things going on in the world that just take a little more than a thousand words to kind of <laughs> explore. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You don't really get to know the characters as well in short stories. It's a lot more. Uh, you don't need to either. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. a short, a short story, I always think it's like it's like a hookup app, whereas a, a novel is <laughs> like a, an actual relationship. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's exactly. Yes. <laughs> that's for my for that's, coffee versus for yeah, planning holidays. Yeah. Together. See, that's mm. that's that's for my my listeners. They. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all short stories. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you're like, I'm, not, I, I'm just, I'm not in the mind space for a relationship. We're just going to keep this short and short, you know, short, be short little pops here, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a name for that, but I'm, I don't think yeah. I'm allowed to say that. But um, <laughs> I, a I, show. <laughs> you were saying that the stories are in your head and you got to tell them. 
So yes. are you experiencing, like, are you kind of like uh, hearing voices? Yeah, these other people are talking to me. <laughs> yeah. Tell the world about me. Yeah. Like, what? How, how long has this been what? going on? So you're, you're <laughs> sitting in a little dark apartment in downtown Vancouver, probably the east side. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> me curled up around a bottle of vodka. Yeah, and, and you're <laughs> hearing voices and, you just, and you're writing them out. And uh, yep. um, that's interesting. So, no, but where do you seriously, do they just come to you in the middle of the night? A, a lot of them do. A lot of them do. And, and, and um, or you go through life and just something catches you and, and suddenly like, whoa, there's an idea around it. Like, so, so the story, the story here, Duotero, like all great literature, it was inspired by a Rob Zombie music video, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and so, uh, it, it's like, and I'm serious. Like, I was, I was just sitting down. I was watching music videos, Rob Zombie music video. It was, it's uh, the the song is called Lords, Lord of Lords of Salem. Um, mm-hmm. It's an animated music video. I watched the video, and I was like, "There's, I, boom, the story came out of that." Um, and so the video is uh it's you know the 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 protagonist of the video is this witch hunter and it's i say it's all animated and takes place and during the witch hunting days and you know it shows the guy bursting through doors and these ugly crones with monsters and ghosts and he's you know capturing them and then burning them at the stake and that's all happening to the grinding rob zombie music in the background but then every once in a while all of a sudden you know the, the this old witch burning at the stake sort of transforms into this young beautiful woman and then kind of goes back to this old crone with all the all the ghosts. And you start to wonder, like, well, wait a second. So is that the witch casting a spell to, you know, appear like a young, innocent woman? Or is it that this witch hunter is seeing what he wants to see? He sees monsters, but that's not the reality, right? And I was like, that's, I want to tell that story. I want to tell the story about that. Like, um, you, you know, we, we look at the world through a certain frame of reference, and that's our truth, that's our reality, that's what we see, but reality doesn't care what we believe, reality doesn't care what we what we see, and how do we kind of wrestle with that? Um, so I was like, oh, I want to tell a story around that, and that kind of, kind of, the, the, the book View a Tarot kind of evolved out of that. Like fake news. Fake news, yeah, yeah, <laughs> fake news. So yeah, that's, you know, like, where do ideas come from? You just... Uh, some, something hits you and you're like whoa that's i don't want to explore that I don't, that's yeah so how, how do you how do you uh make a character create a character then like um so yeah. the main character in your book um how would you how would that go what's the process let's do it that way yeah so a, a lot of different ways but oftentimes it'll be okay so i want to explore this theme so for example with it with this here so it's this witch hunter theme right from this rob zombie music video lords of sam and okay so i don't want to write a book about witch burning i want to it's, that's you know i don't want to write that but i want to write a book about a character who sees the world in a certain way and is that real all right, so that's the character. So the character is somebody who is steeped in this tradition. You know, there's this there's this tradition, this cultural background that gives this character their view of reality, and that view of reality might or might not be real. So that's that's the character. The character comes out of this. Okay, this person who is steeped in this tradition. This is their belief. This is their mindset. This is how they see the world, right? And then you create the world doing things like there's there's a problem and then as the writer i'm i you know i kind of have my own idea about what the reality is so i you know because i'm the writer i i can actually choose the reality so there's the reality of what actually is happening in the world and there's this character who has this view that might or might not be consistent with this reality and uh, and then yeah and then hijinks ensue and then they kind of proceed from there wrestling with that problem uh, and so that's, yeah, you, you kind of choose the character, you like, what's the idea? And then you, you choose the character that embodies that idea, or that can be the vehicle to explore that idea as you move throughout. Yeah, but that's interesting. So, but how do you get into the, the mind of the character, so to speak? Like, do you experience your characters, um, through voices in your head, or do you do it through, do you visualize your character, or none of the above, like because I get all sorts of different answers. Yeah, answers. yeah. You... oh, I'll bet. There's and 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 it's it's probably sometimes it differs per story, uh, but yeah. So so I have the idea of this character, 
and that kind of has a vision in my head. And and for me, there's there's always a bit of back and forth between world building and character building and world building and story building and structure and stuff like that, right? Like that's it's for me, it's an iterative process, right? So I have this idea of a character. Okay, well, he has this worldview. Okay, so now I need to create this world that gives him this worldview. And I create that worldview a little bit. And then I, okay, so if this is how the world works, this is how this character is going to operate and think. Okay, if this is, you know, then I proceed with developing the character. I'm like, oh, okay, there's this cool thing I'd like this character to do. I need to go back to the world building and kind of, you know, backfill how that makes sense, right? Um, so a lot of it, this this character development there's like an initial part where I have the idea and then I do some initial world building and there's this iterative process. And then as I write like that first draft, as you kind of grind out that first draft, there's okay. Um, you know, suddenly you, you see, Oh, there's this cool opportunity. There's this choice that they need to make. There's this cool opportunity there that kind of feeds back into, okay, I need to develop this aspect of their character. Okay. I need to develop this aspect of the world. And, and so as, as, so I usually start with a uh, a core of the character, the idea, the, and the world. And then it's as I write out that first draft, I start to see, okay, there's these gaps that I need to fill. And, oh, there's these other things. And so that the, this iterative process of writing drafts is also this iterative process of, of me refining the character, deepening them, giving them a deeper background. That corresponds with the world building that, the, that the, you know, the character characters come out of their world right so you kind of create the world that that develops that character um and as i say it's an iterative process that happens through a lot of drafts um and that's kind of how it works with that's that's kind of how i i develop that character they, they develop out of this theme this idea that i want to explore so usually i have an idea and then the character, you know, the character is is the is the foil of that, or not necessarily the foil of that idea, but they're they're yeah they're making choices, or they have this. Their starting position is this idea that I want to explore. So you create the background that gives them that starting position as they go through the events of the story. That starting position gets challenged, and they have to change, and they grow. They make certain decisions, and then I say that gives that feedback loop of fleshing out that character. Well, it sounds like you're you're kind of like layering, maybe to yeah. uh, create the world and build the characters. Uh, how, how do you um, how do you keep everything all organized? Yeah, that's a fun <laughs> question. Yeah, uh, so I I use uh, just some software. I, I so I use I use it's a technological hat. That, so that's a fun question because the very first when I first started writing novels that became a problem. Like I, I could only get about part way through the novel before I just, you know, like it kind of collapsed under the weight of all these, like, how do I organize this? Right. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a software fix. I, I use, uh, I use Scrivener. That's, great. Uh, that's, yeah. that's my, that's my tool of choice. The thing that I like about Scrivener, you know, it has this, it has this file architecture. And mm. so, um, you know, there's this big set of files about world building. So I'll have a big set of files like world building and under world building, I'll have things like culture, technology, like language quirks and history and blah, blah, blah. I'll have a, a, a file folder architecture for characters where I sort of have all my notes on all the characters and I can post images and stuff like that. And then you have all the files for the actual story, right? And so with script, I find I like Scrivener, you know, because you can have you can you can set it up so that there's like dual screens. You can so you you're typing in one box, but then the screen beneath it can be your character sheet or it could be your world building sheet and stuff like right. that. So so that 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 was my that was the secret for me was finding um, finding a technological tool for that to keep that all straight. And I like I say I like Scrivener. Before that, I used uh, was it Writerly? I think I used oh, before yeah. that. Um, and it's just, you know, they're just, they're just these bits of software that consolidate, help you consolidate and organize all of these ideas so that they're just, they're there kind of in the left-hand margin. You just scroll down and you click on that. And, um, I find that really useful. That was the secret for me. Yeah. They're great. Yeah. Just keep that all straight. And then, yeah. Hmm. Well, I have to write this down, look into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, take notes. Yeah, I'm taking notes. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna learn how to write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about time I figured this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm getting kind of old, so I better get into this sports team. <laughs> and I, you know, I think like everybody's kind of, everybody's got their own. Like that's the problem with writing novels, right? Mm -hmm. Is 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 managing that 
the, the, all that information. And, and that's uh, probably every writer has got their own way to do it the way that your brain is wired. So uh, yeah. every writer has got to find their solution to that problem. What is it you want people to get out of your book? So if I was to go and buy to a, do a tarot, yeah. um, uh, besides I- entertainment, is there anything else that you're looking for or hoping that I take away from it? Yeah, for sure. So entertainment's one. Yeah. So I wanted I wanted to write a fun story. And so I wanted to write a story that like if you never if you if you weren't interested in themes and big ideas, like you, you could have fun with it. Right. So it's a fun ride. Uh, it's an intense ride. So I wanted to create that. If you're looking for themes, if you're looking for things to get out of it, I think one of the key ideas that I really wanted to explore with this is this idea that, um, you know, we see the world through our frame of reference, right? Like we are, we, we brought up, we're taught certain things, we have certain cultural beliefs, and that gives us this frame of reference through which we understand the world, but we're limited. Like we only have so many senses, right? We can only, you know, we, you know, we can only see what, you know, what, what hits our eyes and hear, you know, things that come to our ears. We have these limited senses and we, we don't know reality, we interpret it, right? And, and so reality doesn't care that we don't have, you know, reality can still be dangerous, right? Reality can still be dangerous, even though we don't necessarily have the tools to understand it. And so when we start engaging with problems, I think an idea that I'd like people to take away from the book is starting maybe with a little bit of humbleness. Like, let's, you know, just acknowledge that I might ha- not have all the pieces of the puzzle, right? I have some pieces of the puzzle, but I don't have all of them. And how do we sort of fill in the gaps? How do we sort of, you know, just we have gaps in our knowledge. How do we fill in those gaps so that we proceed in a way that is in our best interest, in a way that's productive. Old sci-fi or new sci-fi, which is the best? I like both. I like them for different reasons. I like old sci-fi because it was optimistic, and I like old sci-fi because I think it did. It explored a lot of important issues, a lot of really important issues. Uh, a lot of future sci-fi, I find, you know, it's gritty, and I know there's, there's a lot in the world to kind of just, like I like the grittiness of it uh, and things like that. Um, and there are some really big questions being asked today in, sci- in, sci- in sci-fi. Like old sci-fi, I find, yeah, they did explore um, issues that were important to the time. But I find some modern day sci-fi like explores like massively huge questions. Like what is the nature of existence, right? Like what makes humans humans, right? Um, you know, I'm thinking of stories like, you know, Neil Stevenson's Anathem, like this massive tome on like, what is the nature of reality? Um, so I, th- I think modern day sci-fi, ha- there's, there's a lot of it out there that's exploring like really big philosophical questions. Like, what is the nature of reality? What, is the, what does it mean to be human? Which I find really interesting. Um, but I like old sci-fi because, let's say, it's optimistic, um, you know, sort of explored, sort of down-to-earth society, like societal issues uh, a little bit more. So, so I kind of like that. So, so I, like them for, I like them both for different reasons. I like them both for different reasons. What do you, what would you put yourself in? What category? Do you think you're more like an older sci-fi or would it be more like a newer one? You know, it's, yeah, that's a fun question. I feel like I write probably more about sort of the societal. So I, I write a little bit more about the societal issues, which might be more reflective of some old sci-fi um, rather than grand philosophical questions. But I also I also think I'm a little bit more gritty. I'm, I'm more grittier, like like, we, you know, more dystopian, more grittier, like we have sort of with uh, with a lot more current sci-fi. Um, so I, I probably blend the themes of old sci-fi with with the grittiness of. That, that we see in some, not, not like, of course, there's like a gazillion books out there of all different stripes, but, but I find like a lot of modern day sci-fi is not as optimistic as, uh, as the golden age of sci-fi, right? So uh, what, what I try, like, I, I try to get the grittiness, but I try to kind of, uh, I, I do want to, instead of ignoring the challenges that we have, I do want to sort of engage with those challenges and end with a little bit of hope at the end. Um, so I, yeah. Well, what do you think? Um, you know, you use the term uh, sci-fi. What, what do you think yeah. about? Um, you know, there, there are people who don't like to use that term. They yeah. they uh, like to use SF, <laughs> right? Oh. Or just science fiction. What do you think about that? Uh, I, 
Like, who's got the time yeah, exactly. to say all the words, <laughs> right? Who's got the time? Uh, sci-fi rings off the tongue. Science fiction has so many syllables. But, That's true. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you want to be formal, if you want to be formal, I've got um, – am I, am, I, am I, like, wading into a cultural war here about this? I don't know. Um, I, I, <laughs> Maybe. I used – yeah, we'll start one. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Team sci-fi. Um <laughs> I was, like science, science fiction is is more formal. If I was if I was mm. writing a, if I was writing something formal to my boss, I might use science fiction. So I like sci-fi. Just let's say it rolls off the tongue. SF, SF, sci-fi. I like sci-fi. It's got the it rolls off the tongue more. Sci, sci-fi. <laughs> it's got rhyming. Yeah. I'll I'll back you on that. Perfect. Don't worry, yeah, I, I've got you back. Yeah. It's got <laughs> rhythm, sci-fi. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Team sci-fi. That's right. Alan, which side are you coming down? You guys, on? Uh, you guys are you're absolutely crazy. Who cares? <laughs> uh, you are yeah. so wrong. Yeah, I should waste my time on that. You know, <laughs> I've got Kim Kardashian videos to watch. <laughs> <laughs> like real, real issues here. Yeah, like, you know, what? I got like an hour to spend on TikTok tonight. I got real things to do. Yeah, <laughs> dancing exactly. and everything on TikTok. That's I like. <laughs> you know, I got to do that. Well, what do you do with social media? What do you do? Like, how do you address the modern world there? Because there's, um, yeah, know. you know, all the social media, and then there's websites and all that stuff. What do you do? Do you interact with people? I got, I got, so I, over the years, I have become more and more jaded about social media and I, and I find it, uh, I find it hard to, to, to engage in, in social. I'm happy to talk to people. You know, if people message me, I'm happy to talk to people, you know, like have conversations. Uh, but yeah, you know, over, over the years, I've become much more jaded about social media. Um, I don't, I think there's a lot of really unhealthy aspects of social media and there's been, I don't know, I kind of feel like it's had some negative impacts on society as a whole. And I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to get into that. I don't I don't want to get into that game. Right. Yeah. Which is tough because that's how all marketing is done these days. Mm. I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to be part of that, but that's kind of how marketing is done. So I, you know, I have, I have, I have my Facebook page, but I'm not super active on it. I, I don't, yeah, probably the way that I respond to it is by not engaging it and trying to find other ways to market myself. Like I love, you know, this kind of a format here, sitting around having a conversation with like actual people. I love it. I'm all down with like that's the way human beings were meant to, I think, engage with one another rather than little sound bites anonymously <laughs> over the Internet. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I try to find more more what what I find to be more authentic ways of engaging with people. Conversations like this. Uh, like writing, uh, you know, written interviews, uh, things like that, rather than getting into the whole, you know, get, getting into, I think, yeah, getting into Twitter, getting into the Twitter wars and stuff like that, and getting dragged down into that rabbit hole. I don't think that's productive. Just my, me personally, um, I don't, I don't know if that's a, that's not how I, okay. that's not how I want to live my life. I mean, you get on Facebook and or you get on. Facebook. I sound so old now. You get on like social media and you get into these conversations, you get into these debates and they just consume you and they make you feel crappy and you feel angry and upset all the mm. time. And it's like, man, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that energy in my life. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're, we're going to um, ask all of our followers to, uh, to kind of find uh, Brad on his uh, Facebook and Twitter and, and, <laughs> and just slam them. Say whatever. Just you, get the get the flame. Or how yeah. dare you say that about social media? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> be 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 offended. Be upset. <laughs> Call him out on all of his stuff. Right. S F like S F as if what as if as if you know. I mean, you know, this is this guy is awful. You got to get get on him. Cancel him. Yeah, oh boy. Here We're going to we go. have to add <laughs> speculative fiction to that, too. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want to get the fight going? Yeah, no. Here we go. Oh, boy. Isn't all fiction speculative? Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, right. That's what Al always says. Isn't it all bad? There we go. Let's turn <laughs> this place down. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so where, where do you see yourself going with this then? Like, um, you're going to continue writing this bad work or what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I still. I still that's what I do. That's what I do. I have stories in my head. 
still still fleshing them out. Um, yeah, got, do any got, of these stories up. come true? Like, do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you've got mud and blood <laughs> on your shoes and stuff? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, how did I get here? I woke up in the back alley. Decided, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. He wakes up in the back and <laughs> completely <laughs> naked. Like, uh, was I a werewolf last night? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No. No. It hasn't happened yet. Or if it has, it's totally still amnesia. It's still. It's still. That block is still there. If it is happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. someone phones you and you hear the right code words, you won't know. Exactly. Bluebird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's crazy. Um, well, do you have a website then? Do, do people find you on yeah. a website? Like, can they... I do. It's, it's, it's bradanderson2000.com. Apparently there's 2,000 of us. So, yeah, bradanderson2000.com. Uh, you can kind of find out about my work there. I've got a little bit of a blog as well that you can, you can check out as well there. Yeah. Okay, we'll have that up on our website. People can find sure you doing yeah. one click and stuff. So, you know, yeah. they want to hunt you down. It's not too hard. Um, exactly, yeah. So I got an idea. Why don't you write about, like, a pandemic? <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, oh, I'm, just, I'm just pulling this out of nowhere. Yeah, like, hey, let's write about a pandemic. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm very creative, you know. I think yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> Yeah. What, what would make an interesting story? It, it's funny. Okay, so 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 that book, you Tara, there is an element of you know contamination and people get sick and stuff. like that's one of the elements of of the, of of the world, right? Yeah. And I wrote that way before. Like I wrote that way before there was a pandemic was a real thing, and I was like, ah, oh. sure you did. So you were asking about if my stories come to life. I guess I guess. Oh, <laughs> well, you're well, a prophet. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my power. I should. I need to use this responsibly. Yeah. Well, I thought that, you know, because when I read that about that, it says that the crops fail and yeah. and the contamination turns humans into mindless monsters. And I'm thinking, well, oh, have you ever you been go. to the mall? Yeah, there's, there's, yes, there's this, some... this must have been going on for years. I just go to the mall here and everyone's at the Costco. And it's... Everyone's a mindless monster, all my, especially during big holidays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Or, uh, you know, government. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know the inspiration for that. So, so there are again. I try everything. Everything that has to do with the world, I try to grind. Uh, ground, grind. I tried to grind. I tried to grind. He's into grinder, guys. Yeah, yeah. Like get away from my desk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I try to ground it in like real science, real biology, real biochemistry, and things like that. And yeah, there's there's this there is this there is this illness, this contamination that takes over people and influences their behavior and that totally you know there's like uh, like zombie parasites that take over insects and, and and turn insects into these mindless zombies that work for the parasites interest so yeah all all the things that happen happen like there are real diseases in a real world that um that that they're based on so mm. there you go yeah sleep you're tight, a prophet sleep tight tonight. Sleep t i always sleep tight <laughs> wake up loose. <laughs> wake up loose. Sleep tight. Wake up loose. Well, yeah, you know, but do, do you ever wonder where where these ideas come from? In the fact of like, in a way, they're kind of uh, apocalyptic in a sense, or they're kind of a, you know, it's struggling. It's it's fighting to stay alive, so to speak, or to to move forward. Yeah. Um. It it seems like I'm, yeah. It's like humans love staring at car wrecks, right? Like yeah. we love, <laughs> yeah. love just uh, contemplating all. That's weird. That's weird. Humans do. Right? We just love contemplating all the horrible things that could happen to a person, and then we write exciting stories about it, and we're thrilled. Yeah, I know. It's like, like we, we can't love... get enough in real life that we have to write stories about it. I know, right? It's <laughs> like uh, I don't want to be in a car accident, but I love what you know. I want to see. Yeah, um, it's crazy, right? That's that's a weird. It, that's an interesting. I don't know. That's got to say something about us as a species, our psyche. We just, and, as, we, and especially those who write. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I, I swear to God, I'm like, uh, if you're a writer, if you're a writer, especially if you're like a sci-fi writer, like you got to be on FBI watch lists because the like <laughs> Google searches you have to do, right? Like, uh, yep. yeah. like, how does this disease work? Uh, how fast would a softball have to travel to wipe out a city? Like, like for sure, that's got to. It's got to you got to be flagged somewhere for that. Why does this guy want to wipe out a city for him? Like, when was the last story. time you were able to get on a plane? <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> Pre-COVID, yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't know why, but they always strip search me. They, they keep flagging me. I don't. I don't get it. Well, you know, how was that for you? Um, like the last couple of years, did it start? Are you the type of person that the, um, you know, stressful or emotional things going on? 
around you affect you in your writing? Uh, I can, I've, I can, it, like it probably does, but it, it's, um, I tend to be pretty even keeled and kind of, I'm, I, 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 that's, so you're heartless. People, I'm heartless. Yeah. Who cares? Well, yeah. It's the world's <laughs> burning. I'm like, this is fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I found, you know, I was, I was able to, so, okay. I, I was blessed. I had a job that could transition online really easily. Right. So, so for me, it was, uh, it was just one less commute. Right. So, um, you know, different, I think, depending on how the pandemic impact you would totally influence your perception of it. I say, and for me, my job was able to transition online pretty seamlessly. Uh, so for, it was like quiet. It was quiet. I was, you know, it's isolating and you kind of got to deal with that, but it wasn't, it wasn't, um, like it didn't upend my life necessarily, as opposed to if, you know, you'd lost your job. Uh, if you lost your job, if your family was getting sick, um, you'd probably have a very different reality. Right. So, yeah, I found for, for me, I say I was blessed with a job that could transition into online pretty seamlessly. It was, it was isolating. I kind you know, I've always viewed myself as an introvert. And always felt like I can deal with isolation really well. And, and I could, but I did also find like, you know what? I actually like people. Uh, that's one thing I learned from COVID. I actually like people. I actually like, you know, the energy of being around people. And I kind of missed that after a while. Um, hmm. So that was, I learned that a little bit about myself. Um, but yeah, did it, did it impact my writing? It's, the thing with novels is that they take so long. So the issue that I'm writing now with my novels were like from, from uh, you know, from five years ago. Um, mm, wow. Yeah. How long does it take you to do a novel then? It, it does for me, it takes, I'm slow. It takes me years. Uh, you know, you hear all these people on the internet, like, Oh, you can bang them out in a month. I'm like, Oh, good Lord. I, <laughs> for me, for me, it's years. Um, it, two, two years would be fairly quick Two two, two ish years mm. to, to get a novel ready to show the world. At least I find. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I just, um, yes. well, I mean, you've got other things to do, right? You know, you're, yeah. got your stripping and, and job. Exactly. You know, that's, <laughs> that takes a lot, of, that takes up a lot of my nights, right? Yeah. A lot right. of my nights in my free time. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I take my time with it. Like, uh, you know, I, I did the world building. For me, like the world building and the character building is just sort of a lot, of, like it marinates, right? And you just kind of live with it and then yeah, just get some ideas. Uh, it doesn't happen quickly for me. It like marinates over time and, and you sort of like, uh, you know, you, you layer it in over time. So yeah, say for me, it's a slow process. Yeah. I wish it was faster. Th that world building, it just, it, that seems really unusual to me, the whole idea of it. Um, so you, you're actually creating a whole other planet and you kind of got to yeah. go your own and go through all the details and stuff. So that's, that has got to take a long time because it's got to work too, right? It it does. I find like, for, I've, honestly, I find uh, the world building, um, the, my first crack at world building could take weeks, maybe a month. It could take me like over a month to just do um, my initial crack at the world building, just to get the bare bones of it, just to get enough that I can actually tell a story around it. Right. And then, and then, you know, I do my first draft and I find all the gaps in my world that I need to explain. Then I go back and I do another round of world building where I kind of flesh out all those gaps. And then, you know, again, it's that iterative process. We sort of drive down from the from the broad strokes to filling in the gaps to coming up with the fine details, the, the fine visceral tactile details. So so it is. It, and I think that's the thing with like that's the thing with science fiction and fantasy that you don't have if you write if you write fiction you just you get to start that you get to sit down and start writing your story. If you write sci-fi or fantasy, you got to sit down. You got to spend like a month or more just figuring out what the world's going to be, and then you get to sit down and write your story. Right? Yeah, that's that's weird. How how complete does the world have to be uh, before you write a story? Like how much detail do you need? Uh, yeah, that's. That's a great question because you, so you can lose yourself in world building, right? And you got to kind of keep the focus on the story. Uh, like you got to build enough of the world that the story makes sense, right? Like the story is grounded in it. And, and so for me, like it, it, it starts off with, 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 you know, the theme and the idea, the theme and the idea that I want to explore. What world do I need to have to be able to explore that? 
And so I kind of flesh that out to a basic level till I kind of, okay, this is, this is what, this is the idea of what the world's looking at. And, and say so you can lose yourself and you can spend like people spend years world, but you could, you could lose yourself in it. Right. But I, I, you know, I get that first crack, I get the idea of it. And then I write the story. And then the story tells me what are the areas of that world that I need to flesh out more. Right. So I write the story and I, and I hit gaps and I'm like, oh, I don't know what this is. I don't know how this happens. So, so you kind of flag it. And then after I get that first draft, then I go back up and then, and then that guides me to, to like, where do I need the detail? Right. Where do I need the detail? It's like, okay, it's where all those gaps are. And then, yeah. and then I, I, I say, you can lose yourself. Like you gotta have, you gotta, you gotta keep your focus on the story. You need enough of it to tell the story and it's gotta be grounded in the story. Are you planning to make this a series? You know, it's funny. People have asked me to make it a series. People kind of expect it to be a series, but I've never intended it to be. A, I'm like, I thought I kind of ended the story. Uh, I've never intended it to be a series. I right now at this stage of my career, I got I just got a lot of ideas in my head. And I just you know, and, and they're all different stories. So right now at the stage I'm at, yeah, I, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of doing one offs. I don't have I don't have plans for a series. I have been asked a lot. Everyone who's read the story and tells me about it is like, oh, so when's the second one coming up? It's like, oh. Well. I'm, like, I'm working on two or three different stories right now. So, yeah. Yeah, well, well right now, no plans. You spend so much time creating a world. It seems like it's you've got this energy in this whole new planet and idea, yep. and then that's it. Just do a story and it's over. When You could add a, a lot more stories. That, that's the thing that I'm starting to realize now. Like now that I've written a, a couple of novels, I'm starting to realize like, oh man, this world building is like such a time sink. And wouldn't it be easier if I just went, yeah, that's, I think that's one of, it's like economies of scale. Like, you know, the more stories you can get out of one world building, like you, it's the, it's the more, the more efficiently you can use your time to focus on the actual story. Right. I, I'm starting to find that now. I'm starting to find that now. And I'm starting to contemplate like, oh, maybe I should like pick a, create a world and then just base a lot of stories in that world just to kind of get a little bit of those economies of scale there, right? Yeah, you know, because actually each story does not have to necessarily connect either. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, you know, like uh, I, I think the, the great example of that is always like uh, uh, Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels, right? Like the, yeah. like the world is the same, but all the stories are separate, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that can work. And then even, or you could have different stories and then tie them together like three or four yep. books down the road, like all of a yep. sudden one person's another person's uh, yep. cousin or brother or sister from another mother. I don't know. Like, ha-ha, it was planned all along. Yeah, people like <laughs> yep. that. And then the, then yep. the next book you do, it was all a dream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you wake up in your downtown east side apartment. Yeah, hey, with your vodka. The... Yeah, with your vodka, yeah. Oh, what a night. <laughs> what a night. Well, that was a dream. Um, well, so what do you consider to be a really good book, a good sci-fi? Like, what is, it, uh, what is it to you that makes it? Is it just the the story? Is it the technique of writing? Is it the, like, what what is it for you? A lot, a lot of it is the, uh, you know, um, the idea and how you're, and, and how, how you, how you're able to portray the idea. So, um, in terms of like a more recent written stuff. So this, this book probably is, it's, I wouldn't recommend, you know, I like Anathem. I like Anathem by Neil Stevenson. I wouldn't okay. recommend it to everyone because it's, uh, like, it's, it's a, it's, I don't know if you, I don't know if you've ever read it, but it's like, it's a, I it's can't a, read. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Get an audio book. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's a big book, but it is, um, is, it's like a prior, it's like a, it's, it's almost like an introductory course in philosophy, right? And so he explores these amazing, amazing ideas. Um, and, and, and it's like, you kind of have to hold on, you kind of have to hold on for the ride and pay attention, but he explores these really, really great ideas. So if you're like in, 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 in if you're interested in a book that kind of explores the nature, nature of reality in a really deep way, Neil Stevenson, totally, uh, I totally give you a thumbs up for that if, if you're doing that. Um, other, you know, Golden Age of Sci-Fi, Ursula Le Guin, uh, Left Hand of Darkness. I don't know. I, I find I just when I first read that book, my mind was blowing. I'm like, that was such just such a such a, a neat, clever premise um, that kind of just sort of shows some of your own biases as you're reading it. Um, so those are some of my favorites. 
I like I like I like classic dystopians like uh, 1984, uh, Slaughterhouse Five. Loved Slaughterhouse Five. Um, those are all, those are all classic age of sci fi though. Wow. Um, so, what other books have you written now? So, you've done just short story books. Is that it, or what? I've, I've done some short stories uh, uh, early on when I was first starting. I self published a couple of books. <clears throat> I always I always consider those my practice books. Um, and then and then I then I figured out what to do, and then I wrote Duotero. So right now, I'd say Duotero is probably is my first officially published book, uh, picked up by a publisher. I, I do I have another novel that I finished that I'm just trying to find a home for right now. Started another one, uh, and let's say interspersed with a lot of short stories that you'll kind of find <clears throat> um, scattered throughout different uh, different different venues. Well, that's pretty amazing. Well, yeah. do, you, do you find you think it's important to have a publisher? It's a, yeah. Okay, so it depends. If if you um, if you want an audience, if you're a self publisher, a large portion of your of your energy has to be spent towards marketing yourself. So if you're self-published, if you want an audience, if you're a self-publisher, you need to put a lot of energy into marketing yourself. If you want a public, what a publisher does is I think they can help expand your market. They can help expand your market. Um, and that takes a little bit of the marketing pressure off of you. Uh, and so for me, like I've tried both. And for me, my, I like, write I like the, I like writing. I like the writing. That's what I want. Like I, I, that's what I want to do. And I find the marketing myself to be like, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to spend, if I had, if I have, you know, an hour free, I want to spend that time writing, not having to be, you know, marketing myself. Um, so yeah. I, so for me, I like the publisher for that. Right. And then also it's a little bit of like, um, like I like my stories, but does anybody else, if, if, so if a publisher picks it up, that's a sign that like, oh, this story is, is worth somebody else's time, right? It's, it's sort yeah. of uh, like, okay, this is good. Okay, this is good. Um, it's kind of a sense of approval in a way. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Some, yeah. Some, some and some they can help decide. edit it properly and, and make sure it's done That's, quite a bit better than sometimes uh, self Absolutely. Like, here's the thing. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the stories benefit from more people collaborating on, on its development, right? You get, you get, you know, editors, you get publishers writing, you know, editing, edit, uh, editing it for you. It adds, it adds more. And you learn from each of those editors who, who take a crack at your work. You learn from each of them. And then that sort of makes your next story better, right? Yeah. So Yeah, they're trying like, to make a better book. And if you don't like them, you just, you just call them names. Yeah, yeah you're, you're like, <laughs> oh, I didn't get that email. Like, oh, yeah. I must have missed that comment. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, I yeah. do it all the time. I'm fighting yeah. with them all the time. Exactly. And I win. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, a, this is a book people need to buy. Um, it's out now. It's uh, by our um, guest today, who he really needs the help. He's living in a run room room in the yeah. east end of Vancouver, and he can't afford more vodka. He has to get yeah, no my, bottle, my bottle's empty. Yeah, I need. <laughs> yeah it's called Duotero, and uh, you know he's he's really um, he's really good. He's uh, really grinding and transitioning with no problem online. So, yeah, support this man. So, Brad C. Anderson, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much. I love talking about sci-fi and writing, so that this was great. Thanks, Brad. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. Show is over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Yeah. Good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. Show's over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Yeah. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.